Australia has some of the strictest e-bike laws on the entire planet. So this video is gonna help you enjoy your e-bike while staying on the right side of the law in the land down under. Hey guys, my name's Andy and welcome to the channel. So first up, I'm gonna run you through the general rules for riding e-bikes in Australia. That's whether you're doing Uber Eats, DoorDash, or just commuting to work, or even just riding for fun. And then we're gonna tackle the hot topics, which is the power restrictions and the speed restrictions. And then finally, I'll go over sort of if there's any way that you can have a more unrestricted um, experience of e-bikes in Australia. So when it comes to general rules, riding an e-bike is pretty similar to riding a regular bicycle. Like it's classed as a bicycle. You don't need a license, you don't need insurance, you do need a helmet and you do need to ride on the roads, um, cycle paths or shared paths. Now you'll know um, when you come across those because there will be signs indicating that. Basically, you just can't go around riding on regular footpaths. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you're not quite sure what you should be doing, then just ask yourself, what would I be doing um, if this was a regular bicycle? Because nine times out of 10, it's gonna be the same answer. There is one key difference and that's uh, lights. So on a regular pedal powered bicycle, um, the law states you only need lights um, in poor lighting. So for example, at nighttime or even in the evening and early morning, when visibility is not so great. On an e-bike, you basically just need a front and back light all the time. So even if it's like a sunny day, you should have lights fitted. So check their fit to your e-bike and check their functional. If you're new to cycling or if it's been a while since you've hopped on a bike, I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video, which is a great sort of refresher or even an introduction into the general road rules for a bicycle and therefore an e-bike. Right now onto the hot topic. So power and speed. Right, so the maximum power output in Australia for an e-bike is 250 watts. Um, I used to think that was crazy low, but that's actually the global standard. So it's the same in UK, it's the same in Europe. Um, I think America is actually 750 watts, so yee-haw. And when it comes to maximum speed, it's 25 kilometers per hour. So that doesn't mean you can't go faster than 25 kilometers per hour, but what it means is once you hit 25, the um, motor that assists you will actually cut out. So you can go faster than that, but you'll be doing it on pedal power alone. Um, it's worth bearing in mind, e-bikes are generally a little bit heavier than normal bikes, so it is gonna be quite difficult to get up any sort of a decent speed. Um, but if you can do it, more power to you. So with that in mind, there might actually be situations where you get overtaken by regular bicycles, particularly if it's those sort of uh, lycra clad guys on like one of those real fast bikes. Like I've found sometimes you might pull away at traffic lights because you've got the power assist, but then further down the road, um, you actually get overtaken by these sort of uh, like fast riding road bikes. That's where sometimes I disagree with the speed limit. I think it can actually be a bit more of a hazard. Um, that a help, but hey, I don't make the rules. Like I think in America, the max speed is 32 kilometers per hour. And I think that extra 7K would actually make all the difference. But hey, there you go, I don't make the rules. So what should you do if you want to have a more unrestricted experience with your e-bike? Like you want a bigger motor, or perhaps you have an e-bike with a bigger motor, but you don't want to have to like have this 25K limit on your bike, like the restrictor. At the moment, unfortunately, it's like, you have to just be in private land. That's the only way to do it. So if you've got farmland or like a, I don't know, a huge garden, it would have to be pretty huge. But if you've got some sort of private land that you have, oh, maybe even at work, if you uh, have, a, have a kind boss that lets you ride it around on the premises, I guess that's okay. There might be insurance issues there. So uh, don't quote me on that. But yeah, so private land, if you get caught riding on the roads um, with an e-bike that's like more powerful or faster than these restrictions, the police might spot you and pull you over and then, yeah, fines and all sorts. I don't even know what the punishment would be. And God forbid, if you're in an accident and your e-bike is not road legal, you could end up in a whole world of trouble. So that's where the rules stand at the moment for e-bikes in Australia. If you subscribe to this channel and the rules change at all, you'll be the first to know about it because I'll be hopping on YouTube straight away to update you. What do you think about the rules? Are they about right? Are they fair? Do they sort of make the road safer? And for what it's worth, I do think it, it makes the road safer, particularly as I see sort of new cyclists that look a bit shaky, like they've never maybe ridden a bicycle before, jumping on an e-bike to do food delivery. And, and then I say, well, yeah, okay, there is a need for some sort of, um, not guidelines, but some sort of 
framework around what is and isn't allowed. I do feel they are a bit tight, but what do you think anyway? I'm interested to know what you think. Are they too strict? Are they about right? Let me know in the comments below. Whatever you do, please stay safe. Um, it can be dangerous out there. Even the most seasoned cyclists can find themselves in an accident through no fault of their own a lot of the time. Cars are crazy. They're not looking out for bicycles necessarily. Car doors can open all the time and things like that. If you're new to cycling and you are feeling a bit shaky, don't jump straight into the CBD where there's all sorts going on. Go find a quiet area until you feel more relaxed and comfortable. But that's about it for today, guys. Yeah, make sure you subscribe and if anything changes, I'll let you know straight away. And until next time, take it easy.